In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Luke. And I know that we've been going through the book of Daniel and we're going to continue on that on our next show. But I did want to take a break from that because I think that this passage really relates to the story that we were just looking at. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look in the Gospel of Luke at uh, verses, sorry, chapter 9, verses 52 through 56. And he sent messengers on ahead of him, and they went and entered the village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him. But they did not receive him because he was traveling toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went on to another village. So, to understand this, you do have to understand that the Samaritans and the Jews did not necessarily get along. The Jews were half-breeds, they were part Israelite, but they were also other stuff. They had kind of lost their heritage, they had lost the lineage of being able to trace their blood back to Abraham. And because of that, they were viewed mostly with disdain from Jewish people. And this primarily Samaritan village is along the way back to Jerusalem. The disciples and Jesus are traveling back there, and they come across this town, and they want nothing to do with him. And they scorned him. And James and John, rightfully so, they get angry about it. They get upset about it. And then they say to Jesus, so should we start calling down fire from heaven like Sodom and Gomorrah or other events that have happened in the Bible and Jesus just looks at them like, you guys have it backwards. I mean, yeah, it's not right that they rejected us. Yeah, it's not right that they didn't want anything to do with us. But you were of the wrong spirit. You were of the wrong spirit when you take, you want to lash out against other people and take vengeance upon them. Because it is important, important for us to remember as people of faith that do we really believe that God is going to judge and reign supreme in the end? Because if we do, then we don't really have to get worried. We don't really have to be worried about people, quote unquote, getting away with something. We don't have to worry about being the avenger or enacting justice on people. I'm not saying that we don't enact justice as a society because we certainly do. But I'm just saying that there seems to be a mentality amongst many people that we want to make sure that nobody ever gets away with anything. But at the end of the day, even if someone does get away with something, at least from the world's perspective, remember that if they're doing something that is against God's will, they're going to have to answer for that one day. And also, it does not befit a Christian to be overly eager to deal out death and judgment. That's not something that is should be done gleefully, nor should it be done with a eagerness. And so because of that, I think that when we do judge, and this is the example that the scripture gives and the example that, that Jesus modeled for us, we do so in a loving and compassionate way. doesn't mean you sacrifice the truth, doesn't mean you hold things back, but it does mean that you tell them in such a way that you communicate with them, we're not trying to hurt you, we're trying to help you get better. We're trying to help you leave this self-destructive behavior that you're involved in. None of that spirit was in James and John when they said this. And because they were supposed to know better, they were followers of Christ, they were disciples, they had been around Jesus for a, a pretty good period at this point. Because they were supposed to know better, Jesus is disappointed in them and rebukes them pretty harshly. But see, that's the difference. When James and John wanted to destroy this town, when they were upset that this town wasn't being destroyed with fire from heaven, See, they made that suggestion out of anger. Jesus made his suggestion to them that they change the way that they think and the way that they react to things out of love. Because he wanted James and John to be better people. And of course, having the hindsight of the entire narrative of the Bible, we know that they certainly did become that. 
James, of course, being executed as a martyr, and John being someone who wrote a pretty big portion of the New Testament. And so because of that, we really do come to an understanding of the difference in these two. The James and John lashed out. Jesus instructed. He made it into a teaching moment. And that's really the difference in these two and the way that they were seeing this, because had James and John adopted the spirit of Christ, they may have been rightfully upset that they were being rejected, but not because it was a personal slight against them, but because they were rejecting the Savior of the world. They were rejecting something that would have been good and beneficial for them. And that's the mind of Christ that we see portrayed in the scriptures. You see, we ought to call evil out whenever we see it, regardless of who's doing it. But remember that we are primarily messengers, not avengers. Not saying there's never a time to enact justice, not saying there's never a time to enact church discipline or tell people that they're wrong. All I'm saying is remember that the ultimate judgment is one that we are not going to be in charge of. And I thank God that I'm not in that position. Stay the course, friends. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself. <laughs>